I'm making this announcement in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, Laws of the State of New Jersey. Borough Clerk is prepared to schedule the meetings of the governing body of the Borough of Kenilworth for the year 2023. The Borough Clerk has posted a true copy of the schedule on the Bolton Board located at the front entrance of Borough Hall and has mailed true copies of this schedule to the local source, the Star Ledger, and the Home News Tribune, and is maintaining a copy of this schedule in her office during the year 2023. Accordingly, the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied in regard to this meeting. Please stand for the salute to the flag. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Finistrella? Here. Councilman Morrow? Here. Councilman Pence? Here. Councilman Puglisi? Here. Councilman Scarice? Here. Councilman Zimmerman? Here. Okay, I just want to please note that resolution 2023-98 has been pulled from tonight's agenda. Uh, finance report, Councilman Puglisi. Which one? I'm sorry, which, which resolution? Oh, uh, the library board. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay, regarding the Finance Committee, um, you'll notice uh, on the agenda is resolution number 92, and that deals with transferring money uh, from budget year 2022 to budget year 2023. Essentially what happened was because uh, through the efforts of the governing body and primarily the, the, the borough employees and, and the, the borough department heads, we had money left over from the 2022 budget uh, that we are now able to transfer over to the 20, 000, 2023 budget. Um, and as you can see, as part of the resolution, it shows you line by line uh, which departments we had money left over from uh, that were budgeted in 2022 that we're not going to be tra transferring over to 2023. And that total is $445,000. Um, and that's a significant amount of money. And coincidentally, it's also almost almost to the dollar the amount of money that uh, we'll be owing Merck or the successor in interest uh, for the first quarter of 2024 um, as to their tax appeal. So that's a significant help uh, for that. And again, kudos go, goes out to our <coughs> CFO, Jill, and our assistant CFO, or assistant to the CFO, uh, Ken Blom, the department heads, and the employees uh, for making this happen. Secondly, uh, the Finance Committee met yesterday. Uh, we're starting to put uh, a budget together. Uh, we just got very rough numbers, um, but we need to do more work uh, to get it, uh, a solid first draft. Uh, we're going to meet at the end of the month again. Um, you know, it was a fairly shorter, but it was a few hours last night. Um, it was myself, Angela, uh, Ken, and the Finance Committee, um, Jill, and um, so, and I'd like to thank our chief, our fire chief, Scuderi, he was here, I don't think he was here. Uh, he's helping with, uh, you know, with all he can, especially with two areas, um, revenue introduction into the town. We're looking at uh, avenues where we could bring in revenue to the town, uh, which hadn't pre previously existed, number one. And number two, uh, he also told us that, you know, that these new emission standards for fire trucks that are going to be going into effect over the next course of years, over the next five or six years, that are going to make these fire trucks significantly more expensive. So what we had been doing and we still plan on doing is put putting money aside every year for a new fire truck, um, but now they're pushing back the finish line. So, but we're still the goal is still to put my money in um, as we had been doing, but it, it just may take a little longer to get to you know that the finish line. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Councilman. Uh, Department <coughs> of Public Works, uh, Councilman Finistrella. Thank you. Um, last night we were at the finance meeting and we are discussing uh, the bulk pickup. So we're in, uh, hopefully put in bids and negotiation to see how much it's going to cost uh, to uh, 
to have the bulk pick up twice. Uh, Do we have any dates for that at all yet? No, we have to put it in for spring and then fall and see mm -hmm. what the price is and hopefully we can work things out. Um, the uh, <coughs> continues to address emergency repairs, uh, weather permitting. Uh, they've collected and disposed of 45.28 tons of recycling for cost of $4,348.80. Uh, they collected and transported 19 yards of tree parts and 39 yards of vegetation for a cost of $1,035. Uh, they collected and disposed of 194.86 tons of municipal solid waste, total cost <laughs> of $14,575.52. Uh, the DPW wants to remind residents that the facility is open on the first Saturday of each month for recycling drop-off. Next date will be uh, April 1st, and they're accepting recycling, e-waste, mortar oil, scrap metal, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. <coughs> Uh, the DPW responded to nine emergency on-call services for a total of 85 hours. Uh, tree work continues, and be advised that the emergencies take precedence. Uh, street sweeper goes down, uh, goes out every day. There are certain sections of town. If you happen to see the sweeper, sweeper go by your area, try to have the car in the driveway or somewhere else so at least they have access to get the sh streets <coughs> um, uh, congratulate uh, Mr. Kevin Felipe the DPW employee of the month for February uh, he continues to demonstrate above and beyond his efforts and initiatives during his training and would like to recognize Mr. Todd Patswa for three years of service as of this February um, and that's all I have Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Department of Public Safety, Councilman Zimmerman. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Before I read my report, I just want to go over a couple of things. The uh, AED for the seniors has still been ordered. They're still waiting delivery. I know uh, some of the seniors had taken the class and they're they're certified to use the AED. It has not been installed yet, correct, Darlene? Yeah, it hasn't been delivered yet. So it's back ordered. We're still waiting to get our hands on that. So. Also, uh, the street fair, they had a, a meeting today, Angela was there, with the uh, promoter, JC uh, Promotions. It's going to be May 21st from 10 to 4, uh, right here in the center of town. They're hoping to do a, a car show again, also at Harding School, and spread out the uh, vendors for the different, uh, especially for food, because they're always in the center and people complain at the end that they don't have any opportunity to get food. So they're gonna try and spread those out. Um, the setup is gonna be at 7 a.m. that morning, so the boulevard will be shut down from 7 a.m. until probably 7 p.m. by the time they clean up everything. I would say 12 hours, so. But that'll be on May 21st. We're about a little over a month away. Also, I wanna just congratulate the three officers that are on the consent agenda for tonight <clears throat> for their successful completion of their probation year and they're now going to be permanent police officers with the Kenwood Police Department and that's Anthony Almeida, Marcus Trotman and Arturo Gonzalez. Congratulations to them. Also I have I have a report from Chief Seuss, and he had to step out. Something came in. <clears throat> but on March 2nd, a North 17th Street resident had their vehicle stolen overnight from in front of their house. The vehicle was a 2002 Ford F-250 pickup truck and was taken sometime between 4.30 in the morning and 5.30 in the morning. And detectives are checking ring cameras in the area for footage. Unfortunately, there are no suspects at this time that they, they can make heads or tails of based on the ring camera footage. So if anybody knows anything or has any information, please come forward to the police department on that. I know in the past for catalytic converters, it's been mostly Hondas. So this is a little bit out of character for a, a theft. So just try and be as vigilant as you can. If you see anybody that's out of place on your block, especially early in the morning or at night, please call our police department, let them know. I'd rather you make a call and they come out and it's nothing 
versus tomorrow morning you find out your neighbor's car was gone through, stolen, their catalytic converter was taken. Also on March 10th, so Sergeant Sean Caver conducted a motor vehicle stop for a speeding car near the Garden State Parkway. In the course of Sergeant Caverick's investigation, he determined that the driver, Stephen Mass of East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, was in possession of a brick, which is 50 folds of heroin. Mass was charged with a third degree possession of controlled dangerous substances and disorderly person's possession of controlled dangerous substance paraphernalia along with numerous motor vehicle summonses. Chief Seuss would like to commend Sergeant Cavert for an excellent job in taking a tremendous amount of dangerous narcotics off of the street at a time op opioid reuse is out of control in our state and nationwide. He is further commended for being a proactive young sergeant and setting an excellent example for his younger officers to follow. The Borough of Kenilworth recently transitioned over to a new phone system Hunter Technologies handled the installation of the new Avaya phones in not only the Borough Hall, but also the Police Department, the Library, Senior Center, Board of Health, Fire Department, and Department of Public Works. Residents who call either the Borough Hall, the Police Department, or any other department will now hear a menu of options to choose from to be directed to the proper place. The new phone system also comes with an on-call human support 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, which we did not have previously. In addition to being a technological upgrade, the new system will also be a substantial savings to the borough over the next five years. And Chief Seuss would like to recognize Lieutenant Chris Bryson from the Calvert Police Department, who served as the chief point of contact for the installation of the system all throughout the borough of Kenilworth. And he did a tremendous job overseeing the installation. Chief Seuss would also like to recognize him for his dedication and professionalism in handling what was an enormous project that he undertook. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much, Councilman. Uh, planning and Zoning, Councilman Morrill. I'm sorry, uh, Linda. Yes. When, when, we, when do we swear the officers in? Remember, was, was that when they get the first get the job, or did they was, we swear them in after they, they were complete? sworn in when they first? Got it. Okay. Right. Yeah, and then they have a year of probation, and these two officers just came off that that one year. Okay. Recreation and fire council. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you done? Oh, so, oh, no, oh yes. my gosh! Oh, please. <laughs> you threw me off there. Planning and zoning, Councilman Morrow. I apologize. No worries. Thank you. Um, Good news again, you know, my background's in corporate America, and when I get reports like the one I'm about to read, it brings a smile to people's faces. Especially after uh, coming off of the finance meeting last night, we have work to do. Let's chip in where we can, so let me bring some good news here. So uh, the productivity coming out of our construction office has been very high this year, and it just mm -hmm. keeps running at that rate. So kudos to that team over there. Uh, just to put it in perspective, building permits for the month of February last month uh, in 2023 were at 26,000 and change. Compare that to the year before, it was at 10,000 and change. So we're looking at multiple fold increases there. We're about flat on zoning applications. Uh, this time last year, it was 1,200. Last month, it was 920. No, no real movement there. We're starting to see trailer storage fees with things uh, coming up in town. Uh, last month, we plopped in 3,300. The year prior, zero. So we're looking at some good numbers here. Uh, but nothing better than the road opening applications. We had a number of them coming in in February. Uh, the amount of total revenue-wise was 69,500. Compare that to last year's at 5,000. So these are these are multiple fold increases. Good news on the street opening front is that more work is being done. Utilities will be shutting them down this month and have been already. So we're expecting similar numbers to be coming in. This is this is all good news. Uh, state, uh, excuse me, trust state fees. Uh, we clocked in last month 3,500. The year prior 1,000. All good. Uh, we've been reporting on the new hire for our code enforcement. Uh, Ed is up and running right now. Uh, last month, we had 11 new complaints logged in, four related to zoning, seven related to code enforcement, uh, and all being processed expediously. So kudos to the construction department. Good, healthy town activity happening to bring these numbers. Uh, and lastly, I guess I uh, will just note we are still uh, 
In receipt of the permits applications for the apartment building, we're all anticipating coming up on North 26th Street, and they are still under review. So I did promise to keep everybody appraised on what's happening there, and that's my report for this month. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Recreation and Fire, Councilman Pence. Thank you, Mayor. The fire report for February. The fire department answered 33 calls, three of which were mutual aid responses. The rescue squad answered 48 calls. Our recreation report, Easter egg hunt is scheduled for April 2nd, rain date for April 8th at Harding School. At this point, the uh, recreation is waiting to get confirmation to use Harding School for the uh, Easter egg hunt. Basketball will conclude this week. Softball will start in two weeks. Registrations are complete. In January, recreation was approached by the school to take over the middle school track and field program. The fee schedule is on and program is on tonight's agenda. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman. Health, Education, and Human Services, Councilman Scarice. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we'll start off with the library. <clears throat> they asked me to pass this information on. Um, Thursday, this March 16th, the RoboThink Workshop for children's ages 7 to 12, being held uh, 3.30 to 5, <clears throat> March 17th. St. Patrick's Day Craft for ages 4 to 9, Here's old is being held at 3.30, Wednesday, March 29th. Good time string band for all ages begins at 10.30. Thursday, March 30th, Mad Science Program, ages 4 to 12, uh, will be 3.30 to 4.30. Uh, March 21st, Paper Pals, 2 to 4. And March 30th, the Yarnies Night Group from 6 to 8. Um, all program information can be found on the website, Facebook page. Any questions, you can give the library call, 908-276-2451. And um, Lorraine, the library, um, head of the library board, wishes to extend an invitation to mayor and members of council for any of their, to attend any of their programs. We have spoken up. We'll go to seniors. Um, Kenworth Senior Center received two water filling stations in the building on Thursday, March 9th. Um, so now they actually have access to filtered drink and refrigerated drinking water. Um, new gas boilers were installed on the 13th and 14th. Uh, wrapped in, uh, AC unit ductwork on the lower level on March 13th. Um, new roof is about, as we were talking about, and two new AC units on the second floor will be replaced. And um, all that ductwork construction work is about to happen. Uh, let's see. This is all through uh, funding of a grant, which we had talked about earlier. Let's see if there's anything else here. Um, <clears throat> some other events coming up. 17th standard uh, on Fridays, the 10 a.m. chair yoga. Lunch at noon, St. Jack Patrick's Day is at the VFW 4 to 8. Uh, Mondays, they're going to have uh, a nurse come in from 10.30 to 12.30 taking blood pressure at the Senior Center. Uh, 11.30, line dance. Uh, then lunch again. Uh, 21st, Senior Fitness, 10.30, uh, Carver Lanes, bowling for seniors at 1 p.m. And Wednesday, 9.30, Zumba, then lunch, uh, Union County lunch program. And, and on the 23rd, Thursday, major event, Soup's On, which has been uh, talked about a lot, 6 to 8, at the Kenworth Senior Center. I think it's $12 ahead. And something noteworthy, we had, um, I don't know, she's a, I guess she's a former resident. Helen Calloran, a longtime Kenworth resident, is, her 100th birthday is June 25th. Um, she lived in Kenworth 60 years or more, <clears throat> and they would like to have a, her birthday celebration at the Senior Center. What is her name? Helen uh, Carolyn. Carolyn? Right, Helen Carolyn. She lived at 645 Quinton Avenue. Quinton? Quinton. For over 70 years. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, What's the date of the... Uh, June 25th. Yes, June 25th. We're going to contact you. Yes, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll go. Absolutely. Um, Helen was a war bride, a resident of Kenilworth for over 60 years, parishioner of St. Teresa's Church for many, many years. Uh, worked as a travel agent, raised a family, uh, did work in the Bingham Hall kitchen on Friday evenings for many years. Uh, members of Catholic Daughters of America, court number 1781, 
member of Rosary Society, member of Knights of Columbus Ladies Auxiliary, uh, was a de um, decorator of Knights of Columbus Ladies Auxiliary, was a decorator of, at the Kenworth Senior Center, and worked in the kitchen of the Senior Center for many years. So that's a major event. Not everybody gets to 100, so we're, we're happy to have her back in town. Um, I hope, uh, I'm sure that event will be a great success. Uh, let's go to Board of Ed. Um, <clears throat> so somehow the town or the board lost about 100,000 in funding. They called it uh, loss equalized property values. Um, something about, they said, it was a, comp a complex formula I was asking. You know what exactly they meant by that, but uh, so I can't explain that fully. Uh, but uh, anyway, that cost us uh, something about our taxes went up and it didn't go up evenly, something like that. Um, so they reduced our aid. Uh, we happen to be the only one in the county with this issue. Um, so there was a question. Uh, maybe you need to double check the numbers if they are correct. Uh, I'm not sure what what are added to that. Um, I don't know that I follow what you were just saying. What are you? Yeah, the, can we the, the, get, get a better it. explanation of what no, I Councilman get just one. said? You, you go, um, yeah. Could you come up, yeah. our CFO? Yeah. Or Jill, good. I'm not exactly sure what went on, but I definitely know that the Board of Ed was in contact with the uh, tax assessor. And it has to do, I believe it had to do with the equalized value, but I was not a part of that conversation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, there's a, as I'm trying to keep uh, retain students here in Kenworth instead of sending them to the magnet schools and so on. Um, transportation was up 42 percent. So that's a major uh, expense. Uh, they feel that um, trying to make their money back from all the time uh, they were quiet, not transporting anybody for COVID. But that's, um, they might be able to pay parents to bring their child to school, especially the small. Um, it would cost about 85000 to have a student bust or sent out of district without, uh, that doesn't even count the transportation. So um, there's a lot of um, mental health and other things, programs are trying to expand in a way, in the long run, it might save us money uh, as a district. Uh, they're going to do a full rewrite of the middle school science curriculum that's already going. It's called Amplify Science. Uh, a big part of that is McGraw-Hill, which is known. The Harding budget uh, year over year was about the same. Um, students four and up all have their own laptop, a Chromebook. Four and up, all students. Um, they project this, will, this Chromebook should last them at least five years, and it will follow the students, so the student will keep their and bring it with them up through the years. Um, we still offer AP courses, which is great news. Some districts are getting away from that, which is, I don't just, they don't want other kids to get it. They don't like it if other kids get ahead of other kids, which makes no sense, but so I'm glad to report that we are still offering that. Um, big push increase in summer reading and advanced programs. So, and they're trying to introduce a lot more high-tech courses. Uh, a lot of push in the esports arena, which is a really a big thing, younger generations. They have an esports arena in what used to be the library. Um, like instead of business marketing now, it's digital marketing. Um, it's digital sound now instead of music appreciation. It's more tech, and they're making music digitally um, now. Um, they have three phases to the budget. Phase one was up 334,000, and that's due to new programs and a, a lot of expansion of the mental health, which they, they need, uh, I guess, as a, to help kids readjust after COVID. Phase two is just salaries. Phase three, um, they joined a, a benefit pool with other, uh, I guess, schools to gain uh, more negotiating power, because now you're part of a bigger, like, uh, so now they can probably negotiate a better deal. Um, state funding, though, is being reduced. ESSER funds are coming to a close. So going forward, they're going to have some shortfalls. Um, 
like I said, they were trying to keep students here. Uh, if they offer really good courses, that, that'll bring up our scores too. If some of your highest performing students are moving and they're at the MAGA school, it's going to drop overall scores here in Kenwood. So that's not, and to judge a school just on test scores is not really totally fair for, the, for that reason. Um, so there's a motivation for additional courses. Uh, they're bringing in uh, one of the mental health things. They're bringing in small animal care. So far, it's just dogs. Uh, for pet therapy, anything they can for um, some kids that really need that extra support. Um, well, uh, if we go back a few years, they said they had over 20 kids that had to be sent out. We got it down to 16 because of the above programs that um, they said the expansion of the mental health programs. Um, athletic budget um, is really being, uh, we kind of ran into some of that with the recreation. Uh, the biggest problem is uh, even with Springfield, we would, uh, you know, we we had a joint venture with wrestling, swimming, and um, something else. What was that? And that might come to a close. There was only two students on a swim team, and it was fine for them to go to, to there uh, to Springfield. But uh, Springfield might be backing out because they don't want to pay the uh, uh, costs. Um, but the overall athletic budget has been pretty stable the last 15 years, and these are the only possible uh, changing. Um, oh, gymnastics was the other one. So we would, you know, the Springfield wrestlers came here to Kenilworth, and we would send our gymnasts and uh, swimmers there. Um, the wrestling program might be in question going forward. I don't, I don't really know yet. It's been around a long time. Um, we're saving 100,000 by keeping buses on property. It saves the cost of them. Like you would have to, the driver would have to go to the bus route, pick up the bus and then bring it to Kenilworth. We're here, they report, they're already here on property. So that's why uh, it's a big cost savings to have the buses parked here, right in our own lot. Um, they do try to rent out the um, facilities. They get about 50K, they were saying, run uh, school gym or other rooms for different events to try to generate some revenue. Um, they're also looking at some people trying to get their CDL uh, passenger endorsement. Um, so they could drive, like uh, even custodians or even some teachers, they could drive some of these routes uh, after school. And that would save, you know, because uh, a lot of times we have the buses here, but you don't have the uh, license to drive them. And that would save a lot going forward, especially if transportation becomes, uh, continues to be a huge expense. And I think that's about it. Yep, that's okay. all I have to report. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, is there a motion to accept community committee reports? I'll make a motion. Second. Motion made by Brad. Seconded by Councilman Zimmerman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a motion uh, to accept and approve the minutes from the council meeting on January 18, 2023? Motion. Second. Yeah, no problem. No, it's okay. Um, Councilman Finistrella. Yes. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilman Pence. Yes. Councilman Puglisi. Yes. Councilman Scarice. Yes. Councilman Zimmerman. Yes. Uh, we have one ordinance for final adoption, Ordinance 2023-3, Ordinance ratifying and authorizing a lease agreement between the Borough of Kenilworth and Union Baptist Church to lease the paper portion of North 13th Street north of its intersection with Sheridan Avenue as a parking lot for a period of 25 years from July 1, 2022 through June 30, 2047, pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 12-14. C for the nominal consideration of one dollar. Is there a motion to open the public for this hearing on this ordinance and this ordinance only 2020-3? 2023-3. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Does anyone have anything to say for this ordinance and this ordinance only? Please come forward and state your name and address. Okay, seeing no one, is there a motion to close the public uh, hearing and adopt an ordinance 2023-3? Motion. Second. Roll call. Uh, Councilman Finistrella. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Pence. Yes. Councilman Puglisi. Yes. 
Councilman Streets. Yes. Councilman Zimmerman. Yes. Ordinance 2023 3 has been adopted. Okay, next for council consideration is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. <coughs> Second. Consent agenda consists of resolutions 2023-87 through 2023-90-97. These resolutions will be approved by one motion. All items to be recorded individually in full in the minutes. Councilman Finistrella. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Pence. Yes. Councilman Puglisi. Yes. Councilman Scarice. Yes. Councilman Zimmerman. Yes. Okay, and, uh, there's a motion to approve ordinance 2023-8. Motion. Introduction. Uh, <coughs> you're gonna read me, yeah, ordinance 2023-8. Sorry. Oh, in ordinance amending part two, general legislation, chapter 190, vehicle and traffic, article three, operation of vehicles, section 11, one-way streets, <coughs> change the two-way street designating of North 20th Street to a one-way designation from Washington Street to Monroe Street, northbound in the borough of Kenilworth. Okay, I'd like it to open the floor to the public. <coughs> no. no, not for no, this? because this is just an introduction, sorry. Okay. Roll call. Uh, Councilman Finistrella. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Pence. Yes. Councilman Puglisi. Yes. Councilman Scarice. Yes. Councilman Zimmerman. Yes. Did we have a motion? No, we didn't. <coughs> did we a motion and second. We did. I want to make it a motion was, too. We did, mo we did make a motion in a second, yeah. and I believe it was. I don't remember. I made the second. I can't remember. Who. Okay. Yep. I made the motion. You made the motion. Okay. Perfect. But I also want to make another motion before we close. Yeah, we still we're not done. We have one more. Sorry, Gordon. Okay, I'd like a motion to approve ordinance 2023-9 for introduction. Motion. Second. Ordinance 2023-9, ordinance to amend recreational programs fees in section 91-6, article three, entitled fees for participation in programs. Councilman Finistrella. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Pence. Yes. Councilman Puglisi. Yes. Councilman Scarice. Yes. Councilman Zimmerman. Yes. <clears throat> okay, at this time I'd like a motion to open the floor to the public. Real quick before you may do that, Mayor. Yes. Can I make a motion real yes, quick? Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. Sure. I'd like to make a motion for our attorney, Mark Samarara, to accept uh, process in the record matter that we discussed earlier. Thank you. Second. <clears throat> Do we need a roll call for that? Yes. Or do you just do an affirmation? All in favor? Can we do Aye. That? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Is there a motion to open the floor to the public? I'll make that motion, Mayor. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does anyone have anything to say for the good and well being of the borough? Please come forward and state your name and address. Thank you. Uh, just I'll make it quick. I have a few friends <clears throat> that still live on Coolidge Drive when I lived there, mm -hmm. and they are very interested in uh, purchasing their additional uh, flag lots behind mm -hmm. them. I know uh, when I researched it many, many years ago, uh, it went all the way down to Columbia Avenue, and it went from one foot. And if I remember, because it was a long time ago when Mayor Fiamingo was here, uh, I think it went down to 150 foot on Windsor. Wow. And uh, they said they heard talk about it, but nobody's been notified. And they said they left a few messages at Town Hall here and nobody got back. So can we draft a letter and send it out to those residents that it's available? Or can you tell me what's a good time for them to call. What is the call. process, um, is the for, process? For, for a resident to go ahead and, and start this? Mark, can you? 
start exactly what? So um, we just sold a couple pieces of property. Um, so there's other residents that are in, the, in that similar situation that are also interested in possibly purchasing landlocked pieces of property that connect to their property. So if someone is in that situation, what is the process? Do they call Borough Hall? How did they start that process? Yeah, they, they, they should contact the borough administrator. Okay. Express an interest in a piece of property, and then she should, uh, with with permission of the governing body, mm -hmm. uh, ask the uh, engineer uh, to determine whether or not it qualifies as one of these landlocked pieces of property or undersized pieces of property uh, and uh, confirm with, I guess, the various departments to make sure that there's not a use for the borough for the property mm -hmm. and uh, then bring it to the governing body's attention that we have someone that's interested in purchasing this piece of property. We've consulted with all department heads. Here's, you know, here's the location. It does not seem to be a piece of property that's actually used by the borough or has a projected use by the borough. Are you interested in exploring the sale of it? Uh, and then if they are, then the next step would be to consult with me. And then, depending on the type of property it is, under the local uh, public buildings and land law, there are different ways to dispose of it. Okay. There you have it. <laughs> I understand the legal end of it, but we've been through this already on Coolidge Drive, but not everybody was notified. So how do we sure take a go to A to B without all this other drama and extra expenses that we already? I'm not sure through? that I understand the question. Well, let's just say there's eight lots, and okay. recently, I don't know what you sold, but let's say only four. How come the other balance four was not notified? Well, the person, we sales. didn't notify someone. They came to us uh, asking to purchase the that. property. Right. So who, if someone wants to purchase property, they should come to Barrow Hall, speak to the clerk, and then come to the governing body, just like the previous people did. And, 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 and notice takes place, it's under the local public buildings and land law. There the notice requirement associated with the ticket. So uh, a public notice that goes into a newspaper or is there a notice that gets mailed to an adjacent property owner? All of that is delineated by statute. Um, if you're suggesting that the borough do something above and beyond that, um, that would have to you know, be considered by them. Certainly they could go beyond the required notice. Uh, I don't know. Uh, under what circumstances that might or might not be advisable, uh, but uh, we follow the statute. Okay. Uh, just I know it's been going on at least for the last 15 years, and it's a long you know, time. here recently somebody bought a couple pieces of property. So I guess mm -hmm. if we have to call uh, mm -hmm. or a clerk, is there a particular time that they can call, or just call and leave a message and you'll get back to them? Mm -hmm. Just call and leave a message. Yep. Okay. This particular property is 327 Coolidge. I'll have them call and, and leave their address and their name so if you can get back to them because they are very interested and we apologize they couldn't come and speak on tonight. They had a family obligation, so they asked me to bring them. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> Hello, Mayor, Council, Borough Clerk. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Darlene Candarella, 320 North 21st Street, Kenilworth, New Jersey, 26 years. And the Senior Center Director. I just want to bring some things to your attention, if I may, please. Great. The Senior Center. We closed down the Senior Center on March 13th, Monday, through the 17th, and it will resume on the 20th. 
Uh, food service was shut down for the week for the county. They didn't want to do it on Friday, just so it didn't throw anyone mm -hmm. off and anybody got confused. So, but the senior fitness programs and health programs are still continuing at the VFW, and we want to thank um, Commander Bobby Jeans and Kathy because they always allow us and accommodate us. So we've been over there four times, three times this week, just so we touch base with that. They're uh, Friday, March 17th, is their VFW um, corn beef and cabbage and live music, four to eight. Everyone's invited. I had to go by my chart here, my diary. Um, like Councilman said, we got the two water uh, stations filling and they're working and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, they're so, great. so excited to have it. Just put their hand there and there's mm -hmm. the water. It's great. Um, on 13th and 14th, the boiler was changed. I sent all details and pictures of the unit and what it looks like in case you need it for, you know, for thanking, you know, the county, the grants, and, you know, they would like to know how things went. On the 23rd, we do have um, Kenilworth Historical Society having their suits on. They're at 80 tickets sold. So that'll be a fun event. We're just, I reached out to Councilman Morrow regarding limit capacity or max capacity. I looked around the building, don't see anything around. Tony Gallerano flew up. We already had that somewhere in the building. I can't find it. But Shirley Maxwell sent me a long text regarding the capacity a few years back. She thought she was told and it saw it that it was 100. So she- Did you ask the chief of police? Chief Actually, the yeah, fire chief. Fire, fire chief, fire, chief. Fire, yeah. I, fire department. I, I, uh, Mike well, Scuderi would be your guy for that. Okay, I did call Giordino because I had his number and he said it would be building department related and Tony uh, Gallerano says, I know that question. I think we've done that. And he said, I thought it was posted. I said, well, could it have been changed or taken down when they painted years ago? So maybe that needs to be addressed, the capacity. So darling, what was the date that you said this event was happening? This is the 23rd, next Thursday. Soup's on Kenworth Historical Society. And as of this morning, they had 80 tickets sold and they thought they would hold selling any more tickets because they just don't want to break any rules mm -hmm. or anything. And they're also asking me to set up on Wednesday evening, which I told them would be fine because nothing's going on. I could let them in and they want to just set some tables up and things like that and then come a little earlier than 6 to 8, of course, to set up. Um, like four-ish, and I told them, fine, I will be there, I will entertain everything, you know, be where I need to be and mm -hmm. help them with that. I know I have some other important things. And um, pertaining to Mr. Grimaldi, he came to our last event late. I did ask him to sign in if he was gonna dine in with us, but he just chose to have coffee. I know his family for almost 20 something years my son was taught by, I believe, is Candace your sister? Sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Back in the day. So my son is now 22 years old. So we go way back with the family. Uh, I do try to address everything with the senior club members. But it's, you know, it's hit or miss sometimes. So that's why we deal with safely in an email. And mm -hmm. sometimes I get responses, sometimes I don't. So uh, that's, but I do try to coordinate. I do invite them to everything. And only Miss Emily Grimaldi does come. And I had three nice events so far. Forgot that uh, ice cream social, right, Mayor? Yes, that there. was very good. Um, as far as that, and we're doing as much as we can with the Senior Center. Thank you, Angela, for the grant and all that and all the work behind it. Tony Gallerano and Christian and uh, Dominic Latour got a lot of estimates and all the calling and sitting there with the guys and you know that and Mike and everyone who's involved even I believe Jill too and Lisa Wood always with the POs and everything right Jill you're on top of all that money too but I just want to say thank you to everybody and I hope I didn't miss anybody thank but you if anybody has any questions please call me
I'm in the paper and all that. Darling, one second. I just yeah. want to ask yeah. Mr. Zimmerman something as well. Uh, your your event, 80 people. Congratulations. It's That's not my event. It's a historic, 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 historic society. society. So, so. Excellent. Mayor, Mayor Council approved it to happen. Excellent. It, it's great to see the numbers and everybody turning out. Uh, the finger pointing, uh, as we were looking into this before, we may need to consult with an, uh, an architect. Uh, this is, what I'm hearing is not something that the fire department does, but if they have record of the last one, we can likely use the number. And yeah, I would say for the inspection, the they have it uh, on file, because when they, when they go around and do all the inspections in the past, uh, the police department went to the fire department and they had that. Um, so he probably has it on, on when they did the inspection there last, and they usually do it every year. Uh, and I, Blue Giordino did say he would permit uh, do the signs for us right. whenever the capacity is. We need the number. He can, yes. <laughs> so that's why he said go to the building. That's why I sent you an email. And then I happened to ask Tony when we were just standing there, and he mentioned. I, I know that. We have that. It's It's got to be in the record somewhere. All right, we got to pull it out of the file. We, we can check it. with Anthony. Thank you for the lead on that. I already spoke with Anthony. The way that he sees this having to be handled if we don't have this number is we need to get an architect because they're certified in figuring out what capacity would be. And then the fire department issues the placard. So right. that's the process, it seems. It uh, but yeah. if we have the number and we can trust the number, maybe we don't need I to think hire the fire keeps a record of that. We might have to just check with them. All right, thanks. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I don't know if we need to go to an architect. I'm almost positive they keep a record of that. I'm hoping, because we're uh, eight days away. Uh, yeah. That's, OK, so thank you for reaching. We'll try not to sell any more tickets. <laughs> yeah. well, hey. Well, maybe you can. <laughs> well, we can't get over yeah, I mean, 80 seems like right. it seems like they have a lot more space. It's a big building, yeah. big space. I mean, people do buy tickets and then maybe won't show. One time they had it, it was a major blizzard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but hope, hope. Yeah, Shirley Maxwell said they haven't had it in two years because of COVID. And, so there was yeah. an overwhelming uh, interest this year because it hasn't happened. And I also was given a letter directed to me for uh, from Shirley Maxwell giving me six tickets free tickets. So I offered it, well, I was told to give it to seniors, but I can't just pick and choose seniors. That's because I have mm -hmm. favorites too. But I asked them, I asked them to please put their name and number mm -hmm. on a little sticky note. I did start this at the club meeting on March 1st, but I was told I couldn't do it there. So I did say to the seniors, if you want a free ticket or get in the drawing for a free ticket, please give me your name and number. I didn't get any takers there, but the seniors that have been coming in and out of the classes and the VFW members, whoever signed with Kathy, I got a bunch. So I'm gonna draw them here in the presence of borough employees. This way it's all legal. And I got <laughs> six people to call when I called their name. They have six free tickets that were given to me mm -hmm. to give to That's Shirley great. from Shirley Maxwell to six seniors. Very nice. So Very nice. everything's working. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Okay, anyone else? Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. 16th Street. Nice to see you, everybody. Before I start, I just want to say I mean no disrespect to anybody, but I do have questions, and a lot of them. I reviewed the February 15, 2023 council meeting, and I, I really, I mean, I'm not going to tell you what my opinion is on it, but I, I'm, I'm just going to ask the questions. Um, the nepotism clause, I want to know. If that's good enough for the rep, why is that not good enough for the fire department? And before anybody says anything, I'm a fireman's daughter. My both brothers are firemen, and my brother is a police officer. So I have no problem with that. But why does nepotism apply to one and not the other? And has anybody really read the letter of the law as the mayor recited it on, it was a January 13, 2021 clause. And no one was against it. We all voted on it. On the end, it's fine. I'll like to speak for myself, but the answer is it doesn't apply to anyone other than employees. So if you look at the actual provision, and we've got, and we've gotten advice from council as well. So if you look at the provision itself, it just it only mentions employees. 
So it's got it has firemen. It has every. Well, it has. It doesn't just say. No, I tell you, smart for. Maybe you might want to change the, the ordinance because if you're gonna do this, it says volunteers. Do, it does say volunteers, um, <coughs> stipend employees, employees, and independent contractors. It says in the resolution. I the think resolution it's, itself. You should. Let me so correct. As to that, I, I, I could. I could provide some insight. Okay. Let's let's have the borough attorney like give us some insight. Okay, so let's start with the employee manual applies to everyone globally, regardless if they are an employee or not. There are provisions in there that apply to anyone that does, I wouldn't say anyone that does business, but anyone that is appointed or volunteers for the borough, and let me explain what I mean by that. There are clearly are provisions in the employee manual that only apply to people that are paid. But an anti-discrimination policy or an anti-harassment policy, uh, code of conduct would apply to anybody that is appointed or volunteers, etc. So, is this an artfully drafted document? Not really. It, it needs work. Thank you. Um, the resolution takes into account the fact that this manual isn't only applying to employees. So, that while there are provisions in here, like FMLA, or the nepotism policy, or I actually looked at a couple of these, uh, equal employment opportunity, right? Clearly, those only apply if you're getting a paycheck, if you're applying for a job. Um, they don't apply to people that are not employees. So the resolution, I mean, uh, but, but the other problem, uh, policies that I had mentioned do. So the resolution, doesn't mean that every provision in that manual applies to everyone regardless of what their category is. Officials, appointees, employees, volunteers, independent contractors. Not every provision applies sense, to all of them. Though. That's a, just a general sense is what I'm saying. I mean, if you're going to I, take I, you, that one, you, I, you, you know. certainly are entitled to your opinion as to whether or not any of these provisions could apply to other people. But as written, that policy is entitled employment of relatives, not appointee or volunteer of relatives. Now, if you, and now if you think that it should, if, if the governing body thinks it should, it, it could amend. I'm not taking one side or another in that, in that, that issue. You just, can I just say employees of relatives, okay, now, is Mr. Boyle an employee? I'm not going to talk about, and I'm going to instruct everyone okay, not to so talk about there, anything. Well, he's there, no longer employed by the borough. Okay, there's my point. It, it just, it, it doesn't make sense. If you're going to say it for one, you've got to do it for all. Well, also, also it doesn't say, and it doesn't exclude, I just have a question about when you talked about certain groups being excluded in the handbook. I don't see anywhere as I've read it a couple times it where it actually says if that. If I use that term, I apologize, Mayor. Uh, mm -hmm. But by saying employee, it's it's restricting it to that category. And so how do we define it, an employee? Is an employee a stipend person collecting a stipend? Or is it a person collecting a W-2? That's a very... Or is it a volunteer? Yeah, okay, so it's not a volunteer. It's definitely someone getting a W-2. Mm -hmm. And I would think that it also applies to people receiving a stipend unless there's something else out there that says that it does not qualify as an employee. Now, under, and, and I didn't know, that much, and I'm not gonna comment, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to answer a question and not be evasive uh, at the same time, but there are certain limits that we have. I know from other experience that I've had 
that Fair Labor and Standards Act, you know, that's the FLSA, mm -hmm. that's the wage and hour laws. Yep. For one reason or the other, and I don't have it committed to memory, there was an exception under the FLSA for volunteer firemen. So if they were to receive a stipend, they still did not trigger FLSA. And I can't tell you exactly why, but I don't know if I could say, and I'm not an employment lawyer, so forgive me, but I don't know that I could say that, as, I, I could say safely, a W-2 across the board employee. Because of that FLSA exception that exists with respect to the fire, volunteer firemen, I don't know if there are other categories of possible exemption. So I wouldn't be in a position to tell you prophylactically anybody that receives a stipend would be included, because I know of at least one exception. Um, and that, that's, you know, given the information that I have now and the constraints that we have, that's about the best I could answer that at this point. I understand, uh, but you see what I'm talking about. It's poorly worded, and if we're gonna, you know, if we're gonna do it for one, we do it for the other. Absolutely. I mean, and, and, and you gotta understand, we didn't make, we didn't draft that word, we didn't draft that well, policy. We voted on it. Understood, but we didn't draft it. That was drafted actually before. Uh, it was, no, it was, was drafted before I got elected. Like, it was no, no. Yes, it was a split council. It was drafted. No, please, can I finish this? Well, you voted on it, so you didn't need the resolution. I, 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 no, no, listen. I don't get to speak at them, right? No, okay, you can. Can, can I finish it? Can I listen? Go ahead. It was drafted. It was drafted before I was sworn in. That's what I'm saying. We didn't have a hand in drafting that policy. It was on the agenda at my swearing in. No, I, obviously I read it, but I didn't have a hand in drafting it. It was on the agenda the day I was sworn in. So it was whoever drafted that policy. If they have to take issue, you take issue with them. Okay. But you, you voted hundred percent. Well, I just want to okay. you know ask this question, Mark, because our stipend employees do collect W twos. All of our stipend employees collect a W two from the barrel. Even even we do. So technically. When I, when I was referring to W-2, what I meant were salary, like regular paychecks, as opposed to like a stipend, if you were to calculate that according to a, a work week, it wouldn't translate to a, a, a legal wage, right? Uh, so I know that with respect to the fire volunteers, that they're exempt from FLSA. I don't know what laws may or may not exempt other stipends, so I can't comment on that. If they are paid by W-2, then I kind of misspoke. What I was meaning was a, a salaried employee, not a stipend employee. I, I assumed that the stipends were by way of 1099, I didn't know they were by W-2. Okay. There's a lot, there's a lot to learn. Anyway, continuing on. Um, I, you know, I, I saw Roz came up here and she was asking to move forward, and I agree with her, totally. But there are certain people that will not go that way. And you know what? We don't, we need to be cohesive. I agree with her totally there. Um, I have the, um, I've been asked, well, when I was in council, which wasn't too long ago, why are the parks being worked on? Well, you know what? Because we got grants. I picked them up. I picked up about four or five of them. And Laura wrote those grants for us. And that's why the parks were able to be picked up and cleaned up after. We also got grants for the DPW. We also got grants for the, um, the senior center. I mean, we need, you know, we need somebody to write grants if people are going to complain and say, well, why are you fixing this and not that? It, it, there's a lot of work to do here. I am not judging, I am just saying there is a lot of work to do here. Now that I've stepped back, I can see it. I, I really can. Um, the best thing you did for the seniors was get the director that you have, when I was told. Um, I, I won't go there, but anyway, um, I had a lot of fun working with the seniors, actually, at the, at the very end. Um, I did get to attend a few of their meetings. 
it was nice because, you, you know, I don't remember who it was, but I remember the, the woman who came up to me and told me it was the only council person that ever came to one of the meetings and cared. And that meant a lot to me because, you know, I think the seniors are a forgotten group and we should really, really look into That's our future, guys. So, um, you know, they need to be included within our town. And that, when that was, I mean, uh, all this stuff gotten fixed, yeah. But I put in for it, this was last year, the water fountain, the HVAC, the parking lot, the handicap door. I, I did that, I went there, I looked at everything. I just want you to know, that's where it all came from. Um, we need to, after COVID, which blew us away, and brings me to the word decimated, which Mr. Grimaldi used. That's one of my favorite words, okay, because that's what COVID did to us. From there, DPW, I'm, I'm really sorry to see Michael go. I think he did amazing for this town. I can't wait to see what's to come. I mean, I have, I have a suggestion. I don't know how that would work um, for bulk, if we can't do a bulk um, bid or whatever, get whatever. Why don't we get in touch with the um, the dumpster companies and they they come and take it away? Like if people want to get rid of that much junk, they could take it to the DPW yard because Michael fixed it up enough where you could put stuff in there. He had to, he had his men do it and they did a wonderful job. Maybe you could we could do something with a dumpster company and then they'll come and haul it away. We don't have to not have bulk. Maybe we could just think of another way to do it. Um, but. That's just me, and I don't know if you know that's feasible or not. Uh, it was just a, you know a thought that I had, and it, it might work. And I won't bore you guys anymore. But lastly, I do have to rebut Mrs. Zimmerman's testimony because she wasn't right on a lot of things she said. Um, first of all, she came out talking, "We don't want politics," but yet used politics and said they are supporters. I don't think that's right, it's wrong. Um, that, to correct the record, um, she said that Councilman Zimmerman, when he was police chief, was responsible for the hawk light. That's wrong, okay? I'm not, I don't, I'm not looking for credit, but I worked on that. He was the police chief at the time, so yes, he went ahead with it. That was during COVID. That was another thing. We were going to do a ribbon-cutting ribbon ceremony, but we never got around to it, OK? That walk light, I'm proud of that. And also on 14th Street, for the uh, on baseball fields, I had the crosswalks done. There was a traffic study done for that. It's dangerous around here. I, I mean, I'd love to ask for speed bumps on 14th Street. It's 14th Street's bad. I know. We have a legless dog. Um, an amputee dog in the family, so um, because of people on 14th Street. But anyway, um, you know, it, it's just the plate reader is another thing. It was your job. The motor roller system, it was your job. But the well, I think problem, the Chief Seuss did, the, did that. Okay, all right, I'm sorry, then I stand corrected. Um, but the biggest problem I have is where. You had to start a rumor about going to county dispatch. That came from, and that was mentioned in executive session. You were the police chief. You had no right to bring that out and start and put it on Facebook. Okay, I read it back. Here it is. I have it. It went. We went to check the county out. You were probably a little upset that you weren't invited because you weren't your police chief then. But we met with um, Mr. Debbie. And uh, we saw the dispatch set up just to look at it to see maybe it might change, maybe, you know, it could save us money in the long run. But no, nobody wanted it. I didn't want it. Chief Seuss didn't want it. The mayor did not want it. Um, who else was there? Councilman Pence did not want it. Nobody wanted it. So what's that got to tell you? Why would, why would you do that? That sound that was mentioned in executive session, bring that out and start like a rise with that. Choice. I disagree with everything you're saying. I'm not going to sit here and debate you all night. I'm it's not what I'm here for. Me. But it, it, you're wrong. And 
that's your you want to opinion. Your, go check. I just I just did my research. You so. can your research is wrong, but that you're entitled to doing your research. All right, let's so. um. We're not here to do. Right, let's, uh, we're here to do right. town right. business, research. not have a political research. arena that you're trying to make this into. Okay. You don't. I'm just I disagree with you. I'm just rebutting what your wife said, and I really had no right. And nothing that was discussed. Okay. And All right. We're gonna, okay. I'm not here to, to okay. argue with you, and you're wrong. John, that's just my. I opinion. really don't care. Okay. Because it'll it'll you know sooner or later. Sure. Things do come out. Okay. And that's all. Thank I Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. I would like to go back to the three minutes. If we can, that, that the mayor put in place. I never so put I that in away. place, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stop the public from speaking. We've already been over this. I run the meeting. Sorry, no. and, and you know what? I believe that people. I have not stopped anyone, regardless of who and what they were saying, from speaking on, at this meeting. I don't believe in that. I never put the three-minute rule in place. And that there's been plenty of people that have come and refuted a lot of different things here, and I have not stopped them from speaking. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. But is there anyone else? I'll just say this, Linda, just as to that. I mean, and you are correct. You haven't been. You've been. You've been applying it uniformly, not applying it uniformly, I should say. But I'll just say, you know, if there is a, you know, if there is an ordinance on the books. So I think we should either resend the ordinance or enforce the ordinance. Okay, I'm One, resending. We don't have the. I don't think you have the authority to resend it. Um, but I am running the meeting. You are understood. But you, like everyone else, um, is subject to the, to the laws. Uh, and the ordinances are are something that you don't have the ability to. You should have the ability. I mean, you run the meeting. You know, you run it as you wish, but. You know, Listen, the Fred, ordinance was passed by. I just had I, our senior director speak for way more than three minutes. Now, she's telling the borough about things that are happening, events that are coming up. Should I stop her at three minutes? No, I should not, because people want to hear what she has to say. And maybe some people want to hear what all the residents have to say. So. Sometimes people need a little bit more than three minutes, and I don't think it's that much skin off our back to sit here for an extra couple minutes if people want to come up and speak. So I think that obviously when people are saying things that certain people don't like, they want to enforce a three-minute rule. But when people are coming up and saying things that they want to like, they don't want to enforce a three-minute rule. No, so I, I've been I uniform in how I have handled this 100%. Okay, so we I think we can debate this certainly at another time. Um, no, I won't so debate it, but I'll just say, you know, no, to be fair, no, you have applied it uniform, not applied it uniformly. Um, but I really think we should we should have discussion as to whether or not we should resend the ordinance. Uh, if you're not going to apply the ordinance, then there should be at least discussion whether or not we should resend the ordinance. Okay, because I don't think we as a governing body should sit here and ignore ordinances that are that are on the book because it, I it just doesn't want to point out that opinion. this review tonight the person that came up speaking spoke for over 10 minutes and no one on this governing body had any comments about that after so it's very selective on who you want to speak and not to speak I on the other hand am not selective and I am giving everyone the opportunity to speak so no. that's that's where I'm at, and I, I certainly think we don't have to continue this right now, but I certainly will would love to have a conversation about it. Yeah, I don't know what happened. What I, I, there's history behind that, and you know when I was first on council and mayor, there was no three minute rule. I have no idea. Um, from what I understand, it was passed. I didn't uh, even know about it. Never yeah, it was. It. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Um, 2007, I guess, well, 2017 was adopted. So it would have been that under Mayor Glenn. That was prior to yeah. me being on council. Something must have happened to... It would never was enforced as far as I know since I've been... Well, it was enforced. Yeah. Well, not by me. Never by me. So okay. I don't know if you were on council in 2017, but well, I know it, wasn't, I, it didn't happen I was back then. In 2008. And I agree with Councilman Puglisi that if it's, if it's there, it needs to be discussed at this point. 
Okay, so let's allow the next resident to come up and speak. <laughs> So how about the council people having a three-minute rule? I'm just joking. Uh -huh. I, uh, Tony Giordano Concerno, 241 to 2 Avenue. I want to thank uh, Marco for putting up that second camera. I wasn't um, able to come to the last three meetings, and it really helped being able to um, view them, and they were up quickly, like the next day. And to be able to clearly see whoever was up here, um, the audio on one, and I think it was the meeting of the 12th, you really can't hear it at all. It's very, very muffled. Um, so I don't know if that's something that could be corrected because that You can check one, the volume um, on the... Yeah, when Mrs. Zimmerman was up, it was over 12 minutes, but I couldn't hear anything that she or anybody else was saying. I'm just pointing that out, that that one meeting that had a lot of important content um, is in affordable. But the cameras are fabulous. It really helps people that can't make a meeting to still remain involved. Um, and I just will talk real, give my only my opinion about the three minute rule. We only have one place twice a month for everybody to come up, good, bad, or indifferent, um, voice an opinion, ask questions, share information. <clears throat> and maybe that would curtail a lot of the Facebook rhetoric that happens if we are encouraged to have people come up, especially with the warm weather, um, other people that maybe don't want to come out or can't when it's cold or icy or snowy will come and participate more often. I think it really is vital to have a, uh, a good back and forth with all the different departments, all the different council people, uh, the mayor, the borough clerk. This is where you can ask your questions and find your answers out. So I think it is vital um, to have that. Of course, you don't want somebody up here grandstanding, but. Sometimes things are important and it takes a little bit longer. So I would ask respectfully that there would not be a time limit. Maybe courtesy given and the way someone is speaking, um, that could be addressed, but not the amount of time. And it may take longer for some people to get something out. Um, I wanted to share something about grants. There is a grant that's out um, that it was um, <coughs> put out by the state, the uh, New Jersey Economic Development Authority in November of 2022. It is going to go for three years or until the funds are exhausted, but it's specifically for child care centers, nonprofit, for-profit. Unfortunately, you can't be a school, so like St. Teresa's or our preschool at the school can't apply, but any other child care center in the state of New Jersey, and I'm hoping, I know, I think we have three or four in Kenilworth, and it's from 50,000 to 200,000. It's for interior and exterior work. It will include uh, the cost of an architect or, act, an architect or engineer. Sometimes grants won't cover that, and that would preclude somebody from putting together the appropriate proposal. Uh, and the good thing is they made one of the restrictions that you have to hire New Jersey approved vendors um, that hold the credentials for public work projects. What that does is it helps a, a client find a good reputable contractor. And they're all listed on the New Jersey website. So anybody in our town who has a child care center, they, as long as you're licensed, even if you're in your home and you have like 20, 30 kids, you can apply um, for anything involving any kind of um, redevelopment within your facility. So that, I really wanted to share that. A lot of people don't know that that's out there. And that's a lot of money. You could apply for the whole 200,000, you may not get it. You might get 75, 80,000, that's a lot of money. Um, the other thing, I just had a question about our DPW superintendent leaving, which I was very, very saddened to hear that he chose to leave our borough um, after the fabulous work he has done and move on. Um, and 
I don't know when Councilman Finistrello, what are the plans for replacing him? Because I know the secretary is only there for, I don't know what that title is. I don't need to be. Um, Administrative. Uh, that, that, okay, so that person has only been here, what, two weeks, three weeks? So now we have our superintendent gone, and when I was here, um, I think it was the last meeting in February. I know Mike was looking for CGL drivers because I shared with him the company we use and also I think two or three other people for his department. So if we don't have that and we don't have the superintendent, who's, who's uh, well, running the ship? There was a position open he recommended a CGL part-timer there and we yeah. hired him full-time. So what about the superintendent's position? I don't know about that last week. But has it been posted or? Yeah, that's going through, yeah, I'm sorry, that's going through council, yeah. legal council, the mayor, okay. and, the, and the borough administrator. We're looking, we're reviewing over the pop, over the method in which, um, I guess Linda and, and, and the administrator um, and the borough council, the process in which that needs to happen. We're gonna follow the process. And ultimately, the goal is, one way or another, right, we'll have a superintendent. Right. Who is on your committee? I couldn't find that on the website or the website. The DPW committee. Who are your other two members? That'd be John Zimmerman. Uh huh. Myself. And who's the third member? Um, me. Anybody know? Me. Me. Right. Right. Okay. But you're the chairperson. Correct. You, Councilman Zimmerman, Councilman. So will that be posted online? So will you position? I actually put it on the website today. It goes to the league. Yep, that is the standard procedure. We've been talking about well, that. It may have looked earlier today because we're... Yeah, this was maybe around, I don't know, 3.30? Yep, so it went so this it's afternoon. It the it it's going to the league like all positions have to do. They go to the league. What league? Um, the, your, the League of Municipalities, their oh, job hosting. Yeah, there. that's where, but it doesn't have to go there. That's oh, just what we there. use. Oh, okay. It's what we've used. We just have to. It's a good it's source. It's why we spread. The process is it's a mayoral. It's mayoral advice with and advice and consent. Out. So. So the mayor can appoint, but then has to get the consent. Correct. Was that the process with the other uh, um, new hires that we had just before I left? There were like four or five new no. hires. No, no, and and I and I want to say this because the there's a lot of there's a lot of little comments from Fred um, about and the mayor and the mayor, and I can tell you that. There hasn't been one time where Fred has called me or asked me to be part of a meeting or filled me in on anything at all. So I just want to say that I am not included in those conversations. And I know that you want to make it look like you're including me, but you're not. And if one thing anybody that knows me is I'm a straight shooter and I say the truth, and that is the truth. Yeah, I mean, that, that she's correct. So whenever uh, there's no requirement to go to the mayor, we don't go to the mayor. So, but if it's a mayor appointment, why would not, she? That's, yeah, it's not all positions are mayoral appointments so or nominations. I mean, it's an appointment, but it's more of a nomination. Um, some are, and I guess I could ter defer to legal counsel. For some all, all jobs or not? No, no. It depends on the type of job. So Key, key jobs like the superintendent for well, I'll defer to legal counsel, but, but really not all jobs go through the mayor. Yeah, so I'm that's, just trying to understand. Yeah. I'm ignorant to how... The process is so the other There's not jobs that were posted were not mayoral. Well, the CFO was a mayoral um, recommendation, right? And I was not included in that at all. So no it conversation, like, like the not even a courtesy of this is what we've decided. Positions might be like I don't know what would make this different. I, I understand. I'm, I'm smirking because it's. It's, it's a mixed bag to yeah. agree. The statutes right. are That's a right. mess. Uh, generally speaking, officers are appointed by the mayor unless there's another specific statute 
that delineates a different appointment process. So you look at, it's NJSA 40A, 60-5 is the mayor powers. 60-6 uh, is the council powers. So you look at the mayor's powers, it says, she appoints officers unless there's another process. Okay. Lower than officers are the appointment by the council unless the council came, unless the council put into place an ordinance that delineated a different process. Officers, your department, your CFO, right. your treasurer, those are officers. I technically would be an officer. You gotta look at the other statute. You go back into uh, NJSA 40, and it's like in the 100s, depending on what it is. There's one for the administrative officer, there's one for the clerk, there's one for the township attorney, the engineer, treasurer, CFO. Uh, i trying to think if there's anyone else. The department, uh, superintendent of public mm -hmm. works. Okay. You look at that statute and see what the statute says. In this particular case, when you look at that statute, it doesn't have another appointment process. So you go back to the first one, which was okay. uh, 40A 60-5, it says it's a mayoral appointment with advice and consent of the council, which means she puts her forth her nomination. It has to be voted on up or down by the governing body. If it gets voted down, the governing body has 30 days within which to appoint. Not that's actually I misstated that. After 30 days go without an agreement, then the council could appoint their own person. It wouldn't go back to the mayor for a second appointment? The mayor can bring up another another person, another person within that 30 day period. Okay. Let them vote on it. If they vote it down, then again, okay. after 30 days, the 31st day, the council could select their own. Oh, they put it up and then it has to be a vote. Okay. So, of course, never a bright line answer. Council, <laughs> is there any statutory requirement? For the appointee to put in some type of application, a review, and a, and a background investigation. Your code could re, your code has certain requirements for. A, a I'll, I'll just say this: I was involved in the county with doing backgrounds. My lieutenant had to do directorships, superintendents. We do what's called a tier three resume, county application, and they had to get a criminal background check before they were even considered. Yeah. I mean, I do the same so thing. So I my think that, and, not, and going by what Mr. Perserno said a couple meetings ago, we were the appointees about being vetted. Right. I think it's a good idea to have anybody, anybody who wants to be appointed mm -hmm. put an application with a resume. Exactly. So we all know who this person is, where they're coming from. And, and that it's really is my point. That really is my point. If it's a mayoral appointment, I would imagine um, you're looking, you're, you're vetting, you're reading resumes as they come in. You have three, four, five. You're Actually, I'm not even forwarded the resumes okay, that that's, come in. That, or at least I, well, I haven't been. Yeah, you wouldn't for, uh, for positions in which you don't make right, the nomination. Right, I understand that. But even so. the ones that I do make the nomination for, specifically the CFO, I was not involved in that conversation at all. Actually, you were. We had a meeting with the mayor at Mountainside, if you recall. No, that, but that, that was, then that fell apart. And then the second, that, that fell apart. Don't roll your eyes. That didn't work out. Mountainside pulled out of the deal. And then subsequently, I presume you made a whole new arrangement with our current CFO well, that I was not part of. All I'm going to ask. I have no problem with it. She's doing a great job. Yes. I'm just saying that. And I can imagine being a new hire, that has to be awkward if there is not that comfortableness between the seven of you. Um, and that really needs to be put aside. If we're all saying we're going to put it aside, we really do. I think seven eyes on an application Right. is the best way to go, especially in a position of authority in, a, in a, an important department that affects every single member of our borough. So if it's the mayor's appointment, 
yes, you all get a look at it, but let's be objective as to why you would reject it and have that dialogue and say, hey, you know, Mayor, I don't particularly feel comfortable with this, that, or that. Who else do you have? What else can we look at? Instead of just a blanket no, and we're going to put in this one, and she's not even privy to it. The mayor isn't privy to it. Excuse me for referring to you that way. Just as I don't think it would be appropriate if somebody was put on the zoning board or the DPW directly, <coughs> you don't even know who the guy is or the woman is, right? So I think it's very important to stay informed. Um, and I would imagine your three committee members that you know now are John and uh, Scott, right? Right. Fred. 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 Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, we've had, like, for example, uh, when somebody in the construction office was hired in yeah. uh, 2021, no, I was on the finance, oh, no, I was on the construction committee, and no one was even knew that we were going to hire somebody in that position until it was on the agenda that night. So, I mean, it's, you know, everyone says they want to be involved, but when they have the power to involve everyone, they didn't exercise that okay, power so why themselves. Don't, how about this? So, why don't you no, but was, when Iris was hired, that process, you know, we weren't even. Laura and okay, Ellen so we weren't and even the chief in of that. police were involved in that. Yeah, Whereas well, the but, administrator, but the council, I wasn't involved in the that. The council committee wasn't involved. It, Neither I'll was just I. say this. Can we just, can we do today a new day and say if, if you're being vocal about being left out, maybe you're going to be the guy that's going to stop that from happening from this day forward on everything that's going on here regardless of what committee you're on and whether someone else is sitting in that mayoral seat or not because it is affecting all of us when things are done and everybody is not part of the collective uh, decision making it backfires so well, that we, there, there, I, we have committees for a reason. We have yeah, you know, but obviously so, some people are not sure of who's on the committee. No disrespect, Joe. Some people are not sure, and if the committee people aren't sure, how do the town people know? How do the departments who you're representing know? And just look on I, the list. I mean, it's, but the list isn't always there, and it's not on the website. And I'm just trying to be an informed person who has walked both sides of the fence, and I'm just asking to please, if everybody would stop that policy. We're losing too many people. We have a whole new group of people in 18 months that don't even know Kenilworth. So there has to be a collective decision made, not just by three or four or six who happen to be in the majority of power. It doesn't work. And that's why we're losing people, honestly. It's not working. We are, we are, it's like almost inbreeding here. And we're people that don't even know how Kenilworth functions, who's who, what's what. People are being introduced when you guys are in executive session and we're outside. They don't even know who people are. They don't even know who our engineer is. So we really have to think more and involve the mayor who was put here. You're the council president. You're, you're deserving of a certain amount of respect, right, Fred? I'm just asking that everybody give it in return. We have two new council members that have never been on. You're a longtime resident. You probably know everybody better than any of us do. Uh, I'm only here 30 years, so I'm just asking for that respect to be given back. You know, we have leaf collection, bulk pickup, regular garbage, all kind of stuff going on, parks that aren't done, and we lose our DPW superintendent, and we have a new clerk in there. You know, sorry I took more than three minutes. I apologize. Thank you. Have a good night. I want to just say that there was um, a couple things. There was just someone hired, and I'm not sure, Mark. Um, if you can answer this, but I asked to see the application of the people that were being hired on the agenda. I just wanted to read and know who they were. And I was told that I was not allowed uh, by the clerk to see the uh, applications until after the resolution went through that evening. And is that correct? 
I, I labor council weighed in on that, right? Yes, he did. I, I don't. They're not subject to Oprah. They're not public records until they're appointed. And, and it and wasn't, a, uh, and it was a, a purely a council appointment. And it was purely a council appointment. He, I referred to him. Yes. So I wasn't able to see the application. I and I don't know how that answer came to be. Mayor, I, I, I would okay. have to research it. I don't know. Just odd to me. I, I never <clears throat> heard of that before. Um, and I have asked twice for our uh, labor attorney to come last meeting and this meeting because I have a lot of questions about his um, the way he interprets things, and I don't understand it. And I want him to explain it to me, and he has been busy the last two meetings and un unable to come, so I will request once again that he comes to the next meeting. And I also want to, uh, a lot of people don't know this, and there's people that do things in the borough, and most of the time I don't know, but I did find out about this and I want to share it. Um, Tony Paserno happened to be in Mario Park and noticed that our benches were in um, falling apart or in, in bad shape, realizing that there must be a warranty of some, some way called the manufacturer, sent pictures to the manufacturer, and they sent us all brand new benches for DeMario Park. So I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, is there anyone else from the public? Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, my name is Robert Potts uh, from North 17th Street. Been Hi, Robert. In town since 1995. Yeah, my 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> uh, I brought this up before. This might not might not be the right venue for it, but I know twice a year we have bowl cleanup. You usually in April and October. Mm -hmm. And each year, for the benefit of the historical society, they do a townwide you know yard sale, garage sale, whichever you want to call it. I would suggest, and I have made individual suggestion, maybe we can do a townway garage sale in April also, you know, which coincides with the boat cleanup, maybe to help relieve some of the, mm -hmm. you know, the excess, uh, you know, boat uh, that the, you know, boat cleaner. Uh, the historical uh, society does the uh, yeah, garage so sale, so maybe we can uh, see if they want to do it twice a year. Yeah, That'd yeah, be a good idea. Mm -hmm. It also helps me get rid of some junk. Right, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get talking at the same time. But that's, I just wanted to put that out there. That's a great thing. suggestion. Thank you. Know, you. you know, you know, take it. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. The more items are sold at the garage sale, the less that are thrown out. And we that's right, it's cheaper. 100%. We save money. Anyone else? <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I yield to you, Mr. Herman. I apologize. Uh, Bob Herman, 14 North 12th Street. Uh, Mr. Sari brought up a, a point about a dumpster possibly at the yard for bulk pickup. The, and my question is, mm -hmm. is there a concern with bulk pickup or are we trying to save costs? What, I think she was just making a suggestion uh, that that could be an option. <clears throat> yeah, if we, have, if we have no bulk pickup, why not? Well, we don't know that we're not going to have bulk yeah, exactly. pickup. We don't know that. No, I'm just saying. Um, right. I didn't know but it could be a nice option in, yeah. in the event we're we did. We're planning on two bulk pickups right now. So yeah. no, no, actually, said, John, no, no, we're not. We're, not we're, we're going out to bid. Um, we're sending out. We're, we're discussing this on the finance committee. We're going out to bid. The bid's going to have. The bid proposal is going to have one a price for one bid, one pickup, and a price for two pickups. Okay. So we're going to weigh. We might not have two bulk. So we're going to. Yes, correct. So we're going to weigh in the prices. Um, last year at the DPW committee, we talked about it, it was me, you, uh, who else? Uh, Mark David. Mark David, correct, and Michael. We were talking about it, and we 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 said it made financial sense to go with the two pickups. So at the time it did. So, but we figured we cover all bases, and we're going to send out. But the plan is, Angela, right? We're going to send out a mm -hmm. proposal with one pickup, find out what the price for that is, and then uh, a price for two pickups. So, and then we'll get we get to choose, right? We'll have, we'll have we'll, if we get any responses, right? Last year or two years ago, we didn't get any responses. Oh, last year we didn't, but we eventually yeah. went out to private companies and they Correct. did it for less than what we did it ultimately. So we're going to see what. Hopefully, we'll get responses, and then. Um, 
we'll see what the prices come in at. Obviously, the goal is right to keep the same, keep the status quo for two pickups, 100 percent. So, but we have to see what the bids are. We have to get all the facts in before we make it a determination. Is the bids, Mr. Glisi, based on weight, on volume, or just the trucking and that's it? Yeah. It is by volume. It's a combination. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a combination. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be double. It, we could have a one bulk pickup that costs a lot more, more money. I know in during COVID, um, Railway wanted initially didn't give us a date uh, for bulk pickup, and only because they were down manpower, they just couldn't commit. Ultimately, uh, we talked about just having one bulk pickup that year, and it didn't. We weren't saving any money. So ultimately, Rawway wasn't even really agreeing to do one, and they gave us the second date, and we didn't spend any more money to have the second date because for that simple fact that if people have bulk, they're going to put bulk out, whether it's at two times a year or one, and they're picking up that same amount of things. And they basically, at the time, thought that they wouldn't even be able to possibly handle the bulk pickup if it was only one. So it is something to consider. Um, you yeah, know. We would imagine the tipping fees would be similar, right? right. Because right. Unless, unless people don't want that couch sitting in their, in their backyard or whatever right. until next October. Sure. But and then they'll maybe they... <laughs> well, all I'm saying is my, my questions were to lead to a suggestion I would like to make and you guys can consider or not consider it. But I can tell you what some other municipalities do when they're working on their budget and the pros and cons about having one pickup or two pickups or more pickups. Uh, some towns pass an ordinance that you're limited a size of how much you can put out. As an example, one town I know is three foot wide, three foot high, no more than 12 foot long, and it cannot be any construction debris. And also, if you consider that in that ordinance, uh, you know, somebody should be driving around and make sure that the, the local builder or a builder mm -hmm. isn't putting out their construction debris where it's cost of their business. They should have a dumpster on site and not be putting it on a burden when they're going to sell a house and flip it and move on to the next town. Uh, so that's all. I'm just suggesting mm -hmm. if it becomes a cost factor, once you get all your facts, it's an option. I know other towns do it, and, it, and it's working out pretty well with the tipping fees. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it benefit you know the municipalities. You know? Yeah, and Rob, I'm, we also the Camp Finance Committee also. I mean, there's a lot of ideas. This is West. I'm from Eastland. One of the ideas was to put a limit. As to the weight limit as to how much you could put out there. Well, I think that you know, would be that would, for a resident to know think about <laughs> <laughs> yes, my volume. Yeah, I mean, well. In my opinion. You, you know. you, how much does this drive much you, It's pretty much you know is when you look really? at is it, it if it's over. Board? Could you drive past other, sometimes, we know, we, 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 we drive past certain people's houses and it goes from the start of the driveway to the property line. They got lined up and maybe they're, they're, they moved, they're, the house was sold or whatever, tenants moved out. You know that it's over X amount. All right, so I don't think we're going to be going there and I don't think we're going to even going to broach that topic this year. But it was discussed, but yeah, and probably because it came from other towns, like like you're talking about. Um, okay. Again, it's just I'm, no, I appreciate the benefit yeah. to the town and, mm -hmm. and not take away from us residents. You know, we we enjoy the service. Absolutely. You know, there's pros and cons. There's people that come around and are really scouting your house. They're not really there to go look through what junk they can benefit from. You know, the bulk pickup has pluses and minuses, but. I think the majority of the residents uh, appreciate the opportunity that they don't have to go for the extra expense and they can put it out. So Absolutely. it's a good thing. I hopefully it'll work out and we stay to you know two pickups. Great on that. And then the last couple of meetings this year, of 2023, and I'm not picking sides with anybody. Okay, I just again we're just voicing our opinions. Is unfortunately in our country there's this ugly thing called politics. You know, and a lot of people, I don't care if you're red, white, yellow, blue, Democrat, independent, LBTQ, you know, everybody has, That's not politics. has their own agenda. Just so you, know. you know what I mean? Uh, has their own agenda. I can tell you over the years, uh, Mayor, even when you were mayor. Uh, I'm still the mayor. 
<laughs> you are correct. Mayor, when you were in charge, is what I meant to say. When you act the mayor in the last couple of years, I mean, we've seen a lot of people leave town. Some people were let go by mayor and council that knew the town, that knew the town. Knew the Most town. people that left left in the list uh, since January 2022. Right, I have the list. Now, uh, as our director, what a great guy, a great job he did over there. You know, I was a big supporter of him. I loved everything he did to our yard. But, you know, he left because he got a better job opportunity. He left because he, he had one week vacation taken away, his raise from 2022 and 2023 taken away, his clothing allowance taken away. That's why he left. Uh, actually, that's not correct. Well, but you know what? I, I don't think we should talk about, about I can an employee's. Uh, uh, that's, that's actually, that's that's actually not correct. I'm so I don't know why. He, listen, that, that's not correct. Mm -hmm. okay, right, of course. So um, I don't think we should talk about a specific employee's no, no. Uh, I you know, reasons. But I'll just say this because there's, there's a little bit of drama, I guess, over the past weekend or something. So I'm not, I'm not on too much on the computer, on the Facebook. So, but I get the screenshots and it's amazing to me how much inaccurate statements are out there. So are you saying that that didn't happen? I'm saying no, I'm asking what, the question. Said, yes what you no. just said is incorrect. 100%. So he did not have a week's vacation taken away? That's not correct? That's not correct. He did not I'm have his raise from 2000. Well, I mean, you're, you're saying it's incorrect, so I'm asking well, I'm you. I'm making a blanket statement question. that most of the things you just said was incorrect. I want you to tell me which part was incorrect. I, I'm not going to discuss. And I don't think I'm, you know, Mark, I don't even it think sounds I'm, like you're not I being honest. I, I, I would suggest not to discuss issues certainly where there's a disagreement because I don't know where it could go and I don't know but I know bear with me one second there are employment rights and contractual rights and rights in play here and it doesn't serve the borough's interest to discuss what one party may correctly or incorrectly think happened. I don't know, I'm not making any sort of comment, I don't even know what the issue is, but if there's an issue about uh, something occurring that may have infringed on a contractual right or a common law right, I don't think it's advisable to be discussing that in public and possibly giving people ideas about potential claims that they may okay. or may not so have. Maybe we should not have this conversation. Okay. Right. Uh, let's move on. But I will say in 2023, uh, it's very common today in the workforce, it's a corporate or blue collar job. People are changing jobs all the time. It, it's just very common. And, okay. And then my last part I'd like to say is I hope for the future of Kenilworth as some residents feel, uh, when, it, when and if that person ever chooses to become a mayor or council person, they remember their statement that, you know, changing people, people that don't know the town, uh, hopefully they're open-minded and remember that we want to move forward from this day forward. Because again, that ugly business of politics, uh, some people in the borough, uh, in all different departments, trust their jobs over over politics. You know, not not incompetent or not knowing the job or not knowing the town. So I'm good with moving forward from this day. <coughs> but I just want to put it on the record that any new politicians that may get elected by the people remember their state. That's all. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, Bob. Okay. Mayor, Is there anyone else? Mayor, oh. uh, the discussion regarding the uh, garbage pickup bids, mm -hmm. I would just reiterate to uh, Angela to please let us review the bid before it goes out because they're subject to public bidding laws and they're, uh, you can't have ambiguities and variations when you're going for the lowest bid. Okay. Uh, and there may be some other options to proceed with, but we, we certainly should. Review the bid documents for the okay. Just real Thank quick you. on that too, Mark, if I may weigh in on that. I know last year I was involved with that on the DPW committee. And if uh, instead of 
narrowing it to make it more broad so that so the company has a whole week to pick up instead of a, a specific timeline. That's why nobody bid on it the first two times out. We And when we made it, it had to be a little more broad and a little more workable than <coughs> narrow-minded. And that's why it went out to bid twice and we got no bids. And then you were here for that. And, and, and that was only because of the schedule you learned? That yes. Yeah. yeah, so private private companies, they and eventually, since nobody bid on it, the one company that was willing to bid on it that, that came in, we were able to uh, work with them to, to do it a different way. But it still worked out yeah. to do one side okay. and the other side of town, yep. just in a different schedule of pickup times and, and dates. At, at first blush, I think that you do have that flexibility as long as it's equal. It had, but it wasn't advertised that way, and that's why yeah. nobody bid on it. Okay. Yeah, so, and during the finance committee meeting, we actually yeah. discussed, rather than putting <clears> specific <throat> weeks, and it was to that end, put specific seasons, right? So we said generally, you know, like, or like a May or June, in, or any time in September or October. So you could don't want them, obviously, in the summer or in the winter, but not limited to certain weeks, but to certain months. So it may allow for more bids, and like yeah. you said, more. And last time it was one week to do the whole side of town. Broadway came in with three or four trucks, where this company that came in and had one. But they dedicated that truck to be there, but we gave And they them, did a good job. They did a great job. They did a good job. They did a great yeah. job, but they weren't, they, they didn't have enough trucks to do the whole side of town, and that's more. So we we kind of worked it over a, a longer period, so the one crew could do it instead of having three or four crews like Rollway Yeah. So if you have questions on it, I, I worked with them last year. I'll, I'll help you. But I'm just yeah, yeah. I just want to narrow it down so nobody bids again and we're stuck. That's no. I, I I understand it. I understand it. And, and certainly we would work to the extent that the law gives us that flexibility to do. Certainly would suggest that you do it, you know. Yeah. I just, just to make it a little more easy for, for somebody to bid and not be, you know, under a microscope and have to do it within a certain period of time and not be able to do it so they won't bid on it. I understand that. I understand that. We'd be happy to work with you on that. Yes, okay, sir. Hold on, so I can't say that. Well, there's been this much concern. Let's let the public finish. Let's let the public finish, and then you'll have the opportunity to speak. Finish up. Because I might be here a lot. I was just curious to know, was, was there that much concern about the DPW when the, uh, the existing uh, leading director, when they got rid of the other directors? 100%. I don't know. Uh, there was. <laughs> I don't know. There was good reason. Uh, My understanding was against their will. It's kind of not true at all. You can speak to yeah. Councilman Zimmerman. He knows well about what happened with the previous uh, superintendent. And I doubt there'll be any noticeable difference in DPW service. I have full confidence in those crews. They know what to do. So okay. the size of the town, if they're concerned. By the way, bulk pickup, if you get to Nick and Pete, it's no longer bulk pickup. It just say three feet, you're going to cut your couch in there. People aren't going to do that. They're just going to start dumping And you have to pick it up anyway. So um, I think that's a concern. And if you have a dumpster, certain people don't have the strength. They're not going to be able to bring it to the yard, you know, I'm thinking seniors and we're not going to go like haul it into the dumpster. But it might help in some way for younger people if they can bring stuff. It definitely is a problem in Kenworth. We have like the worst pick of, I mean, Union takes three pieces like every Monday. It just, because we don't have the room to leave, like you said, have couches or something. I don't know if we still can pay to get rid of it. Is that still, we can. Yeah. All right, yeah, we, we don't have to do that. Otherwise, look at it for nine months. <laughs> All right, good. Oh, good. I'm going to go make a pot of coffee. All right. I don't think I went over three minutes. <laughs> Rich Becerra, 241, Big 2 Ed. Hi, Rich. Um, I just have a couple of questions, and I'm really not going to be here long. But um, we talk quite a bit about executive session. And uh, maybe, Mark, you could help me out. As you know, uh, this board, the, uh, our board, goes into executive session. Now, the executive session is for the governing body, the mayor, your ears only. And it really should not drift out to the public, correct? Okay. Because that could be, a, correct me if I'm wrong, a criminal offense. In some ways, if you leak out information that was in executive session, whether it be the governing body or the planning board, the zoning board, because that information is getting out there that should not get out there. Otherwise, we could just do it in an open forum. Criminal 
I, I don't know that it rises to criminal, but it's certainly not in accordance with the law. You know, I, I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm not sure that it would graduate. Like you got, you know, uh, different types of felony, first class. You know, I don't. So, so maybe criminal is harsh. Right. But if we talk about <clears throat> if we talk about going into an executive session, and that's specifically because if one of us in our position says the wrong thing, then it could come back and haunt us. So we talk we talk you use the word ambiguity. So the ambiguity is behind the statement as well, maybe not criminal, but it's certainly not within the law. Where does that fall? So I'm trying to understand um, when I go into an executive session, when you folks go into executive session, if I hear that 15 minutes later in the street, let's just keep the doors open. So I'm going to ask that everyone, every member, governing body and planning board, zoning board, whatever form goes into executive session that will respect that, that it doesn't leak out. Whether I'm scratching and I really want to know, it just has to stay here because that gives us that much more um, problem to either solve a case that we have or solve a problem that's going on or trying to figure out who's on the right side of something. So I just was trying to draw that out. I, I, yeah, I could expand upon that a little bit if, if uh, you like, Mayor. Mm -hmm, of course. So the executive session, uh, it, it covers a couple of different things, uh, contra contractual negotiations. Obviously, if anything regarding contractual negotiations was out in the public realm, it's going to compromise our ability to negotiate effectively, right? Because the other side could theoretically find out what you're thinking, what your pros are, what the cons are. Another reason for executive session is attorney client communication. And that one is sacred. Um, it's sacred in the sense that just like no individual member of the governing body has the ability to take action on the behalf of the borough, you only have the ability to take action as a, a body. The attorney-client privilege is a privilege that exists between me and the governing body, and no one individual has the ability to pierce that. Correct. Okay. Good. And there are obligations of elected officials, ethical obligations of, of political officials, elected officials, to honor that. Uh, so I can't comment off the top of my head as to where that potentially could fall within the realm of anything that's criminal, but I know that extreme, eth and I'm not suggesting that that would be, but extreme ethical misconduct does rise to misconduct, which is which is a crime. I don't know, and I can't tell you where that line would be. I don't think that it would be triggered by doing a simple breach along the lines of what I've just said, but still not advisable. So I guess a crime could exist as a felony, or the crime would be if something about a labor dispute is discussed here in an open forum, there's a crime that's going to be committed if somebody goes back and says, hey, wait a minute, they were discussing this in an open forum. I know I, I, it could be an ethical issue. I'm not sure that that would rise to a crime. All right, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one, I'd like a motion to close the floor for public discussion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Does anyone else have anything to say for the good and welfare of the borough? That's the wrong panel. There's nothing else to be brought before the council. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.